Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vijay. In this lecture, we will discuss about executive or management development. The major outcomes of lectures are After taking this lecture, you should be able to define executive or management development. The two terms are interchangeably used. Uh, you will be able to explain the objectives of uh, executive or management development. You will be able to elaborate the process and the different methods of executive or management development. And finally, you will also be able to classify the executive or management development methods on the basis of their purpose. According to Filippo, Management development is the process by which managers and executives acquire not only skills and competencies in their present jobs but also capabilities for future managerial tasks of increasing difficulty and scope. Okay? Now according to S.B. Budhiraja, who is a former managing director of Indian Oil Corporation, uh, he defined executive training as uh, any activity designed to improve the performance of uh, existing managers and to provide for a planned growth of managers to meet future organizational requirements. Okay. Uh, now from two definitions, it is clear that the executive or management development involves certain activities or processes, one thing. Uh, that because of which not only the present competencies and skills are raised but their capabilities for handling future difficulties are also improved okay please understand that the executive development or management development is a systematic process of growth and development by which uh, the managers develop uh, uh, their abilities to manage okay uh, it is especially for uh, leadership skills uh, and uh, for those who are employed as top members of the management okay let's move uh, to uh, the objectives of uh, executive development the objectives of uh, executive developments are observed at two levels top management level and at middle management level at at top level, some of the important objectives are as under to improve. Uh, the first one is to improve analytical ability and decision making. Then you have uh, to understand economic, technical and institutional forces. Third is to acquire knowledge about the problem of human relations. And uh, finally, uh, we can see uh, we have to improve the participation, etc. Now, please understand at top management level while referring to different objectives the concerns are of external environment as well as that on internal environment of the organization okay when we are referring to decision making and the first one uh, understanding economic technical and institutional forces the second one uh, there we are concerned with both external and internal environment however problem pertaining to human relations and participation are more or less internal in nature okay let's see how uh, mr bill gates uh, uh, works or has worked you know the bill gates uh, is uh, the founder of Microsoft. Uh, he believes in a participative style of leadership and uh, in empowering the subordinates. Um, the fact that Microsoft uh, and the flagship brand that's Windows still holds uh, uh, despite of serious competi competition uh, uh, is a strong testimony to Mr. Gates uh, uh, leadership skill. Uh, the exhibit or this exhibit basically points towards uh, our fourth objective that is to improve participation and the benefits uh, of the same being reflected uh, uh, um, by Mr. Gates in its uh, organization Microsoft. Okay. Now let's understand what's there in the objectives at middle level. As we have discussed that the top management level objectives are carried at both external and internal level. Uh, we need to see that at middle level, at middle management level, the concerns are pertaining to internal environment only. Okay. Some of the objectives for the executives at middle level are to establish a clear picture of uh, executive functions. 
responsibility and accountability uh, then uh, we have to become familiar with the use of financial accounting psychology etc and then we have to inculcate knowledge of human motivation and their relationship okay now let's see uh, uh, what went with the toyota toyota had to recall 2.3 million vehicles for faulty brakes okay because of which the company faced uh, lawsuits jim lens the ceo of toyota at that time instead of covering himself or instead of uh, hiding himself and letting the pr team handle the case or the situation he appeared on the deck dialogue so the deck dialogue is a uh, see the deck dialogue is a platform where anybody can place their questions resentment etc uh, for understanding we can say it's similar to linkedin or facebook okay uh, now see uh, when uh, jim appeared on deck dialogue and answered the questions the queries and taken the resentment shown by the uh, and the consumers uh, and the past employees and the activists regarding the decision taken to, um, to recall 2.3 million vehicles because of the faulty brakes when he responded to everybody this response minimized the damage to company's reputation so the behavior of uh, mr jim has saved uh, uh, toyota a lot further the behavior of uh, jim brought a clear picture of executive responsibility and motivation to the teams uh, and uh, was taken as a role model by uh, the middle management and also by the top management in uh, many of the multinationals okay hope you are clear with the objective part of the executive development let's move to our next section that is uh, process of uh, executive development or uh, management development the first in the row is uh, analyzing executive development needs please understand here we are concerned with human resource planning in this step we need to have a close and critical examination of the present and future developmental needs of executives or managers okay basically saying we are trying to identify what type of executive will be required in the organization at present and in future too okay got the idea then we have uh, appraising the existing talent at this level we uh, carry on the qualitative analysis okay once the qualitative analysis is done the performance of each executive is uh, then compared with the expected standards which helps us identify the gap please take a note that here we are trying to identify the gap between the actual performance and the uh, expected standards that has been set into the organization okay let's move to our next step that is preparation of uh, development programs when um, we have identified the gap in our previous step uh, now this gap will help us in preparation of a specific development program at this step we'll start preparing the development programs okay now see in uh, planning uh, development program for individual executives uh, what we do is uh, based on the information gathered from the uh, previous steps we know the strength and weaknesses of each executive okay from the information that we have gathered now we are aware of the fact that what are the strength and weaknesses of each executive and hence special program for individuals could be planned and are mostly planned okay uh, to understand that let's take an example let's say we identified that mr a who's an uh, executive uh, lacks in presentation skills okay we have identified the gap okay now at this step we'll plan the development program specifically for mr a not a general program specifically for mr a means to say from the information that we have gathered we must be aware that how to train mr a in presentation skills okay so the um, the information the strength and weaknesses that we have gathered now from that we can easily identify that how to train mr a in the presentation skill let's say he learns by lecture method or let's say he learn by role play so on basis of uh, that information that where he learns the maximum he his executive development program will be structured 
okay got the idea that how the uh, 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 development program for individual executives are planned uh, uh, in the case okay then we have uh, the conduction of development program here uh, um, in the case of conduction of uh, program the trainer shall have mastery over technical details as well as training skills please uh, understand the two most important skills required at the conduction of the development programs are the technical skills and the training skill sometimes it's also observed in executive programs and that suitable incentives are also offered uh, for motivating the executives to take a learning okay finally we have uh, the evaluation now see um, uh, this whole process is a very costly process uh, as executive development is mostly carried at the top uh, brass and many times at middle level also hence it becomes utmost necessary to determine the output of the time money and efforts invested in executive development okay uh, so in order to have the evaluation what we could do is we carry on for the survey of executive behavior we uh, uh, enters into opinion surveys also and these surveys are being carried just to judge the performance apart from this there are certain other indicators which are also the reflective of the effectiveness and the indicators uh, uh, may include the increase in productivity reduced costs uh, or profits etc etc okay and now see uh, uh, the picture on the right uh, depicts uh, the confidence feeling uh, after a successful completion of uh, the executive development program okay then we have uh, methods of uh, executive development these we have already covered in uh, covered in our video lecture titled uh, uh, training method part 1 and training method part 2 let's move to our last phase of the lecture that is the classification of uh, executive development methods on the basis of purpose in the table below we have uh, purpose on our left, uh, left column and uh, suggested method or technique uh, for achieving the specific objective or purpose onto the right column. Okay, let's understand this. Uh, it says uh, if job knowledge is to be taken or to be provided, then we can use coaching, apprenticeship or vestibule method okay similarly for uh, organization knowledge we uh, we can use lecture method job rotation etc etc for uh, journal knowledge lectures coaching committee assignment similarly for decision making and problem identification uh, you could use action learning business games case study role plays etc for interpersonal uh, you can use behavioral modeling or uh, lectures are suggested and uh, finally for changing attitudes behavioral modeling lectures case study etc could be used okay please note we have quoted different methods for a single purpose which shows that more than one method or technique could be used to achieve a specific purpose however the different methods quoted for a single purpose does not produce same result for example if we want to make change in the attitude of executives kindly refer to the last row of the table then behavioral modeling method will produce the best results then the second best option uh, are the lecture method and the third best is the case study okay uh, I guess uh, I hope uh, you got the idea how the things being carried on with this uh, we wind up our lecture hope you enjoyed the lecture please feel free to uh, write a feedback thanks for patience learning thank you very much